In this video, we are going to calculate a factorial. Now, if you are not familiar with what factorial is, then you should know that the official definition says that factorial is a product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. So, if we take, for example, number 5, then 5 factorial, which is the exclamation point, that's how you denote the factorial, well, 5 factorial equals 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, and that equals 120 altogether. So you can see that one of the options to compute the factorial is obviously a loop. So we could simply loop 5 times, and within the body of the loop, we could perform all the calculations. Alright, so the first thing, we're going to interact with the user and simply ask the user to enter the value that the user wants to calculate, or the factorial that the user wants to calculate. So this is very simple, and we'll ask the user to enter the nth value as an integer. So now we will capture the nth value, and since we are asking for an integer, we'll convert it all to an integer. Alright, so we have our variable n, so now after we read the line, we can perform the calculation within the loop. So I'm going to construct the function that calculates the, the loop. So I will do a private static. Since we are doing everything within our one class, I will just use static methods and functions. So static, and it will return an integer, and I'll just call it calculate loop. And within the loop, we need to pass the integer n. So if the user wants to calculate the factorial of 5, the integer n will be 5. So let's create a variable, I'll call it factorial, and if you remember, the factorial starts with uh, the numbers before the number n. So if uh, the number n equals 5, we'll start from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the initial value of our variable can be 1. So now we can uh, perform the loop. However, in this case, we are going to loop backwards. The n equals 5, so we will simply loop 5 times. However, we'll do it backwards, m meaning we'll start with 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, and then 1, and we'll perform the multiplications within the loop. So we'll do a for loop, and to do that we will do integer i will equal the n, so again, if n equals 5, then i equals 5, and we will loop as long as the i is greater or equal to 1, because remember, it's non-zero integers that the factorial consists of. So as long as it's uh, up to 1, we will be looping. And since we are starting from 5, we will do i minus minus. So first loop will start from 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, and then 1. And within the body, we will simply add the multiplication of the factorial and i. So our factorial will equal multiplication of i. And that's all there is to it. So if we start from 5, and factorial by default equals 1, uh, the beginning, then the first multiplication will be 1 multiplied by 5 and add it to factorial. So now factorial will equal 5. In the next iteration, the n will be minus 1, so it will be 4. So now we will have the 5 that is within the factorial multiplied by 4 that equals 20. Then it will be multiplied by 3 and added to factorial all the way to 1. So after the loop, we can simply return the value of the factorial. And that's all there is to it as far as the loop goes. All we have to do is go to our main method and call this uh, function. So this one will be the loop calculation. So I will simply say loop calculation and I will do the factorial of and the factorial of the value of n that the user supplied and then is and I will do the result of the calculation which basically is the return value from the calculate factorial, or the calculate loop, sorry, function, and pass the n as the argument. So again, 
we will display this loop value or the return value from the loop. So at the end, if the n equals 5, it will say loop calculation factorial of 5 is and the result will be 120. So let's test it. So it's asking for an integer, let's do 5. And you can see loop calculation factorial of 5 is 120. So that is correct. Now another way to calculate the loop is uh, going the regular way from 1 to 5. Right now we did the backward loop, but let me just show you how to do it in the regular loop. So I'm going to create another function. I'll just call it calculate loop 2. And we are passing the integer n. And here, before we started with the factorial equals 1, now we'll start with value of n. So if the user passes 5, then our initial value of the factorial variable will be 5. So now the body of the loop will do another for loop, integer i, and we'll start from 1. Before we went from 5 to 1, now we'll go from 1 to 5. And we will loop until the i is less than n, and of course we will do now i++. plus plus. And within the body we'll perform the same calculation like we did before. In other words, we will do factorial, multiplication equals i. So we, again, we'll add the product of the multiplication to the value of factorial. And we will return the value after the loop finishes. So now I'm going to my main method and I'll just copy paste this line and I'll just call it loop 2 calculation of factorial n is and whatever the calculation is. It should be the same if you pass the same number n. So let's try that. So please enter the nth value, let's say 5 again and you can see loop calculation is 120 and loop 2 is 120 as well. So this is the loop solution to the factorial but another solution would be to use a recursion and that's the topic of our next video. So stick around and I'll see you in the next video and we'll do the recursion solution to this uh, factorial calculation.